August 29th, the first work day of the week that we call the Day of the Sun, S-U-N, Sunday. Brethren, it's in the year 2010, so let's go right on over into the Lord's Care Ministry. Our daily walk with Jesus Day 240 of the year 2010. Jesus heals a man with dropsy. Brethren, I suggest you write the chapter and verse down so you can study it at your own leisure. To do that, brethren, I, I suggest you write down the chapter and verses down so that you can go back and really get into the Word. You can use the pause button down here in the corner to stop and start this lecture at your own leisure so that you can uh, be able to keep up with us in the Bible. Well, with all that stumbling around, brethren, let's get right on into Jesus heals a man with dropsy. And to do that, we'll go to Luke chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. One Sabbath, as he, that's Jesus, was in the home of a member of the Jewish council, a Pharisee was watching him like hawks to see if he would heal a man who was present, who was suffering from dropsy. Jesus said to the Pharisee and legal experts standing around, Well, is it within the law to heal a man on the Sabbath day or not? And when they refused to answer, Jesus took the sick man by the hand and healed him and sent him away. Then he turned to them, Which of you does not work on the Sabbath? He asked, If your cow falls into a pit, don't you proceed at once to get him out? Again, they had no answer. Luke, the physician, identified this man's disease. He was suffering from dropsy an abnormal accumulation of fluid in the body tissue cavities. Unafraid. Earlier Jesus had been invited to a Pharisee home for a discussion, Luke chapter 7 and verse 36. This time a prominent Pharisee invited Jesus to his home, specifically to trap him into saying or doing something for which he could be arrested. It may be surprising to see that Jesus on the Pharisees' turf after he denounced them so many times. But Jesus was not afraid to face the Pharisees, even though he knew that their purpose was to trick him into breaking their laws. Jesus was not afraid of confrontation. Neither should his followers be. We can trust God to help us to have the right words and trust him to accomplish his will through us. Our need for daily prayer. O oh, merciful Father, I claim your covenant promise which says that you will write your laws upon my heart and remember my sin no more. May I hear you say, Go and sin no more. Your faith has saved you. Faith is a gift that grows as we use it. And you hold fast to my name. I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he had dwelt bondifully with me. Your daily walk on that narrow path will bring you eternal life with the Father and his Son. The Great Physician, Matthew chapter 9 and verse 12 reads, It is not the healthy who needs a doctor, but the sick. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust, never in the tradition of men. Beware of the tradition of men that make void the word of God. 
brethren, are you using this day to go down on that corner building and worship the devil? You say, no, 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 we're worshiping holy Jesus, holy Jesus. The Bible says, the Lord says, the Jesus says, and you know, he was the Lord of the Old Testament. Today, the first day is the day, a work day, not a worship day. He sanctified the seventh day of the week. That means he made holy the seventh day, not the first day. Get in, dig into your Bible and find out for yourself. You will find no place in the Bible, no place that says that we are to go worship the first day of the week, that Sunday is the Lord's Day. When the Bible mentions the Lord's Day, I think it mentions it once or twice, it's talking about the millennium, the Lord's Day, the thousand years. Remember it says a thousand years is one day to the Lord. That is the Lord's Day, not the first day of the week. Check it out. I have. Do you want to be on that narrow path that leads to the kingdom, to salvation? Get down on your knees and repent for not following with the Lord what Jesus has told you to do. He commanded you. He does not, Christ does not want anybody in his fold that he cannot command. Believe me, brother. While you're on your knees, ask for the wisdom, the understanding, and the knowledge of the letter that he sent to you. And that is found in your own Bible. Brethren, with that, we're going to close for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.